Hey guys, Tyrep here, bringing you some more Master League action. This is some day three combat between Loveness playing as Soviet, immediately going for Armored Assault, and Nico playing as Osir, immediately going for Mechanized Assault. So I guess you could call this top four. I think this is a double Elam tournament. I, th I think this is top four action. You can see Nico actually going for an unusual build order, double pioneers with the Assault Grandiers. Usually this would be a bit of a surprise, but with Loveness going a Radio Intercept Commander, he's going to see this coming and accordingly has gone for a Tier 1 strategy, so can counter this very effectively. Radio Intercept showing its strength here. But yeah, this is on uh, Bukaj's Rework Winter. So a few differences here and there. Overall, the map structure pretty similar. I think that piece of heavy cover wasn't there previously on the, uh, the munitions point, which is not fully symmetrical either. Amazing, he's trying to pick away at the assault grenades from long range. Got the M3A1 coming out for Love Nest. Getting over to this side. Getting to work on the Assault Grandiers. Penal's getting chased away over here though by the Assault Grandiers. Bit of a close range fight. Grandiers versus Pyos on the far side. And 3A1 though. Taking quite a lot of damage. That is one of the impacts. Of the changes, you know, lower armor these days. But more health. Makes it easier for SMG squads to actually chase it away. Phase 1 completed for Nico. Second penal coming in now for Loveness. You can see Nico trying to keep these two assault grenadiers clumped up together. So if the M3A1 comes back, they can form a united front against it. Penals were briefly over here, but now they're moving more towards the center, going for the VPs. And at the moment, Lovni is struggling for territory control. Still very low on the command points, so... If Nico was hoping to go for the mechanized assault group, that's going to be coming in quite late. Slow start to this one. But it's getting the tier 2 up now, and... Can already start production on a 2 2 2 Love Nest over here looking for the wipe on this Pyo squad. They went maybe a little bit too deep. Got a penal into their retreat path as well. And there we go. Nice wipe there from Love Nest. Got on top of the cutoff as well. Penal's coming around the corner. In 3A1 coming down here. 2 2 is in production. Once again, though, this is where the Radio Institute can come in handy. Maybe Love Nest can build. A uh, P terrorist upgrade with the penals? No, he can't actually. He doesn't have the munitions for it. That's how poor his territory control has been to this point. We got hiding around the corner. And there we go. Starting the retreat now. Maybe hoping to bait Lovenest in securing our to chasing and maybe he'll open up opportunity with the 2 2 2. I, I, I'd be surprised if Lovenest chases past halfway on the map. There he goes, disengaging now. Triple penals for Love Nest. And uh, this squad here is the one upgrading with PTRSs. Don't see this dynamic too often at the high levels. I haven't seen too much PTRS penal use in tournament play since they got the triple PTRSs, but they are very strong against light vehicles. Most players going for conscripts tend to be better in the late game especially in tournament play but here we go PTR squad inside the M3A1 a little bit more damage oh not quite enough though Loveness disengaging on the chase and uh, Nico gets away close call gonna have to repair that back up before trying that again 
it's tough though, you know, because I have done a lot of strategies that involve putting a squad inside a troop transport as of late. And, uh, yeah, the squad inside, you can't target what they shoot at. So sometimes they can be a little bit disobedient. Shoot at an unintended target, can really mess you up. Get a bit of PTRH damage there on the 222. Ooh! One more shot was needed there. You can see there's one model on the squad that was a little bit further back, out of range, I think. Nico cutting that really close. Remember, he did lose that Pyro squad, so repairing these 222s up is going to be quite a lot slower as a result. You know, one of the best counters to PTRS is uh, heavy machine guns some suppression going on them but uh not for nico still just with the assault grenadiers doesn't have any long range which is a little bit concerning three coming through the terror squad's back at base oh boy bit of a pathing hiccup but the 222 had to reload i think <laughs> oh boy that was a close call, but now for Love Nest, he gets away with that. Trading a bit of territory on the edges. Oh, a bit of a pathing hiccup, a bit of body blocking there. 2-2-2 two, two, two coming in, hoping to maximize the damage, maybe look for the wipe. Both the 2-2-2s two, two, are up to full strength. Love Nest... Thought maybe he would put down tier 2 here. Get an anti-tank gun out. He's going for a yet another penal squad though. Has been struggling for munitions to get the triple PTRSs. Remember they are a little bit more expensive. The third PTRS upgrading 70 instead of 60. And here come the double 222s getting to work. Pack in production for Nico, expecting maybe a light vehicle from Love Nest. Oh boy, but look at this, spinning around. It's behind the building though, still alive with that N3A1. Pino's jumping out. Getting to work on the 222s, a little bit of a pathing hiccup there for Nico. The traffic jam. You go in a good position though in terms of territory control. Oh, try and get some S mines up, and that's going to stop Loveness from regathering that. Doesn't have any sweepers yet either. So strapped for munitions. Oh, but hanging around a little bit too long there, Nico. And the PTRSs snipe him off. And back in with the uh, 2 2 that was a little bit healthier. But yeah, Nico paying the price there. Trying to push his luck, trying to maximize his damage. Operating with that low health light vehicle, and it ends up costing him one of them. T70 in production now for Love Nest. sweepers. I was like, oh, where's this munitions going? But yeah, it's going on those mine sweepers, looking to clear off S mines on the fuel point. So even though Nico has taken some losses, look at this territory control and got S mines up on quite a few points as well. Quite promising. The enemy is taking our territory. Sweeping those up now, but here come the assault grenadiers, going to try and shut that down. Might be able to sweep off the ones towards the south. Hmm. T-70 could come through and crush them, I suppose. Looks like it has his eyes set on the 222. Connecting there. T-70 driving past. Going after the 222. Focus fire over to the pack and then deciding to disengage. 
Does have some infantry coming in support. I think he could have kept the pressure on there. But Lovney is playing it very safe. I think that was like honestly a GG position. He just drove the T70 behind the pack, tried to block its pathing. Came in with those two squads of penals that were nearby. I think he could have got the job done, but let's sneak her off the hook. And that is one of the impacts. Going for all these assault grenadiers. No snares. I don't think I've seen uh, any teller mines go down. Maybe that's what Loveness was worried about. Getting a teller. But it's not relevant. Not that I can see at least. Some east mines on this VP as well. Loveness has fallen quite far, far behind in that department. And here we go. Tech coming up for Nico. Still a decent amount of fuel away from the medium tank though, and his control is fuel well, cut off at the moment, so you won't come quite slow. Two getting up close and personal. T70 clearing off the S mines, crushing them away. Here come the PTRSs from the side. Don't quite get any damage done. Oh, there they go. One of the things that makes PTRS is so strong compared to other handheld anti-tank is the range. 40 range. Everything else, like bazookas, piets, whatnot, is 35. So those light vehicles don't have that 5 range window to try and exploit the handheld anti-tank. That can make them very effective. I'm just looking to put up a mine, but that's going to get interrupted here. It's kind of late to realize it, though. There they go. Close call, though. <laughs> that could have been a wipe. Very vulnerable. Okay, Loveness does have the N3A1 at VET2 now. Can use it as a capping tool. Looks like he's going to attempt that maybe go for the cutoff 222 is at full strength though a little bit risky and love nests anchoring down here on the tier 3 going for an SU-76 don't see these very often but going to be necessary against that incoming flak panzer that would really teach at least one squad of PTRS penals a lesson Coming in at a good timing to counter it. Quite refreshing to see some Soviet tier 1 play as well. So much conscripts as of late. There we go, SU-76 missing its first shot. And that gives it away that Loveness has indeed gone for an SU-76. Nico aware of that now. Though. Here come the pressure from the infantry, but the infantry is getting shredded real fast. Black Panzer combining with the assault grenadiers, popping out the grenades, but Loveness holds his position, doesn't retreat into them. As a result, doesn't take too much damage ultimately. A few more air spines going off on the far side. PTRS squad coming around the corner looking for the sticky satchel. Oh, I think he needed one more PTRS shot. Nope, does get the kill. Just been right on the money there. Oh, when he gets away, Nico didn't chase with the assault grenadiers. Maybe he can get this one though. Yep, love nest. Ends up losing that. Here comes SU-76. It's a little bit low on health. But the pack is getting chased away by the T-70D crew by the T-70 in fact. Flak Panzer coming in, SU-76 doesn't know which way to turn. Now getting flanked by the Flak Panzer. Recruit on the pack, T-70 staying on top of it. Oh that is a horrendous pathing for Love Nest. Oh no. That's one of the reasons why you don't see the uh, SU-76 too often. Feels like it always ends up in that kind of situation. Decro on that again. T70 trying to get away from the flak panzer now. Terror squad still back at base, so there's nothing really to save the T70 
apart from maybe a slight mobility boost compared to the Flak Panzer. Flak Panzer popping. The Blitz though, trying to close the distance on the T-70. Oh, could this be the end of the Pyo squad? Close well, caught. Black Panzer with the Blitz though, I think it's fast enough to get the job done. Yep, and there goes the T-70. Nico in the carnage did end up producing another pack, just in case he ended up losing that pack, I suppose. Coming in with that, but 3A1 dodging away. I think it does have very long line of sight already at this stage. Might be 65 sight range on it, so... Can see some stuff coming. It's actually very helpful if you can keep it alive in the late stages using it as a recon tool. Especially if you don't have a, a sniper, if you're going for a tier 1 no sniper strat, the vision from the M3A1 is really, really useful late game. So, devastating hit there to Love Nest. Lost a penal, lost his both his SU-76 and the T-70, and now he's in an awkward position. Can't really afford to sit around and save. Decides to go for another SU-76. Nico kind of close to another medium tank. I imagine it's probably going to be the Panzer IV next. But, I mean, could go for another Flak Panzer. does have the double packs. And the Flak Panzers, as we saw, can do some reasonable damage to the SU-76's armor. Isn't that strong? I mean, he did have the option of side ticking to tier 2. Try and field as this. Might still do that. No, he's going to go for another penal. Interesting. Need to work with the M3A1. Pretty good flame damage done, but here comes the flak pans. We've got a pack back there also. He jumps out of the vehicle. Make sure he doesn't lose the combat engineer in the explosion. Oh! Oh, that was a cheeky satchel. Nearly worked. Nico dodging away at the last second. He's calling in the planes. The issue is the Flak Panzer can shoot them down. So they're not going to get a huge amount of work done here, I imagine. Terry is coming in. So seeing six, another shot in long range. Flak Panzer shooting at the PTRA squad instead of the planes. One plane down. So they're going to come through for a second pass though, or at least one remaining, onto these anti-tank guns. I'm getting some nice suppression done as well. So Lovnis does convert this to a good amount of territory control, even though he can't quite get any kills. That being said, the Flak Panzer is here revealing itself. Pin onto the retreat path. A little bit too early on the satchel though, doesn't do very much damage. I'm surprised though, you saw the Flak Panzer over here shooting at his planes. Three PTRE shots would just about have been the kill there, I think. Looked like it was slightly below quarter health. Perhaps a missed opportunity for Love Nest. Enemy forces are neutralizing a sector. Well, chaotic sequence, but Nico looking to bounce back after losing a lot of map control. And is, is he maybe looking to go for a tiger next? Hasn't gone for a medium tank. No battle phase 3, however. Could be a reasonable option though. I'm just going for the sniper next. Interesting. Let's go for a rebuild on the penals as well. Which you don't see too often. That being said, no tier 4 down yet for Love Nest. One of the big assets, I suppose, with building a conscript instead of a penal at this kind of stage is that usually you can just upgrade it straight away with the 7-man upgrade. Which makes it quite effective at these later timings, but this doesn't have that. Hasn't gone for the upgrade yet either. Advised reserves. So penal still with the expensive reinforcement cost at this stage. 
begin to work long range. I'm not hanging around. Gonna go for the Panzer Fort. Not stalling for the Tiger. And Lovnis going for a second SU-76. SU-76 is back there. Maybe I'll look for some attack ground action. Sovereignty is getting chased away by the masses of infantry trying to bait these squads. Maybe over some of the remaining S mines. So they're more on the right hand side though. This might not walk over them. The enemy is taking Double our tanks territory. coming out to the right hand side now. Uh oh. Oh, Love Nest on the run. SU-76 not rotating to deal with these either. Just conceding a bunch of territory. Love Nest struggling on the VPs. Triple cap running at the moment. Low half remaining. Here comes the SU-76. Connecting. Pretty good connections there from the SU-76s. Oh, a few more S mines going off. Looks like he might stick around for the D cap, but the Flak Panzer's heading over there fast. Not facing a particularly good direction to start the chase. And so they do get away. Some more S mines going off over here. These penals low. Looks like that's the last remaining S mines, though, all detonated from that victory point. Panzer 4 coming through again. So it seems it's a little bit further behind. Here comes now. Venus dancing with death here. Extremely low. So it seems it's chasing for some more damage. Double packs on the far side, so they were in a position. Here come these assault grenadiers. Nearly knocking out that penal. And the barrage hitting too much. At this stage, it might be worth Lovnest going for a second squad of PTRS penals. Just, I feel like he needs the extra threat of the snare, a little bit more anti-tank. These SU-76s do get flanked, well positioned, having the extra bit of handheld anti-tank is going to be really, really helpful. And in those cases, you generally would go for it on the squad that is lowest in vet. You don't want to sacrifice a really strong anti-infantry squad with PTRSs and because the PTRS squad would be doing uh, vehicle damage they tend to vet up very very quickly so we'll close that vet gap with those received accuracy bonuses very quickly thanks to that upgrade Sniper, sold performer for Loveness so far Quick look at the KD. I've missed, uh, yeah, looking pretty good in that department. Nine by five. So the sniper's gonna help close the gap. Squad looking for the satchel, can't quite get in range. Fire off a few PTRSs. Damage onto the Flak Panzer. Flak Panzer does have pretty weak armor. What is it, like 110 armor? The PTRSs have about is it 80 penetration. So they are very likely to penetrate it. Depends if it's for, you know, 180 armor. 50 50. The bounces. Double pack connection. Issue 716 chased down now. Pans of 4 looking for the kill on it. Now the 76 spinning around, but the double packs are advancing. Triggers a mine there. Oh, good attack round work though from Nico. So 76 getting away. The Flamer takes a big hit from the Panzer IV. Could go down now. Flak Panzer chasing in for the wipe. No, <laughs> I can't believe they got away. Demo charge, eh, Lovinist? Okay. Brumbeer next from Nico. 
We see those too often. It can be a reasonable option against the PTRS squads. A little bit more oomph. Still no tier 4 tech from Love Nest. in there from the flak panzer third issue series six coming in for love nest so they're having trouble locking on this squad seems like they should have sight but they don't charging in a sniper though, getting to work. Spotted though. Issue series 6 low, backing away. Doing some damage on the Panzer IV, enough to keep it away. Issue series 6 coming through over here. Supporting the push on this side. Issue 76 is getting flanked by the assault grenadiers. Maybe they're going hunting for the sniper. Bit of crush action though, as they come through that choke point. Brumbeer getting in way too close. Takes a sticky satchel. He's driving forwards. Knocks out a few penal models with the explosion. Issue 76 could get the kill here. Not driving forwards with the other Issue 76. This one getting chased away by the double packs. Sniper under threat from the assault grenadiers. He's in an awkward position. Starting the retreat now. Nico starting the chase down. Double packs facing up. Sniper gets away. Second issue 76 coming back in. Uh oh. And now the double packs are actually quite low. Third issue 76 is getting back into the mix. This is a dicey situation for Nico. He's caught in the light artillery barrage somewhere. So 76 is getting the work done. Recruit on one of the packs. The other one properly decrewed. Oh, missing the killing blow on the flak panzer. This is 76. Trying to get away from the pack. He's going to go for an attack round. Oh, and he gets it too. There goes the flak panzer, however. Penals in the center have had to retreat. I've missed going for the deep kill on the crew pack and now a barrage on the other pack oh and he misses the killing blow on the pack assault green is sprinting forwards get on top of it again team six trying to get away now has to oh man i feel a little bit sorry for loveness if he killed that pack would be in a much better position now if he killed that flak panzer like a shot earlier, could have maybe gone chasing for the uh, broom beer as well. Didn't quite get it done, but at least his sniper stayed alive. Felt like that could have been a GG situation though for Love Nest. Didn't quite get the reward, and it all started because the broom beer a little bit clumsy on the pathing. Ends up taking a uh, sticky satchel, and that opened the door for a lot of damage to be dealt. At least, uh, I think he kept both of the uh, vetted SC-76s alive. The one that died, I think, was the Vet Zero one. So, probably best case scenario there for Love Nest. And Nico uh, going for a third pack now. Be back up to pretty much full strength. Oh, uh... So is going down to the mine, I think. There's a demo charge that went off there, but I think Lovney's had a mine behind that as well. We are losing the it's the wipe. We go very low on infantry now. It's a barrage, or is it a six barrage? Because it has a is this gun mounted to it, right? Come on, you flame is getting on the triple packs out the rear. 
And here we go. Lovnus getting the tier 4 tech up finally. Feels like he's got the time to try and achieve that now. Nico, you know, lacking a bit of capping power. Lovnus should be able to hold on to the points a lot more effectively now. And Lovnus could really do with a Kachusha to deal with those triple packs. Still though, I think I probably would like to see Lovnus with one more PTRS penal. Definitely the vehicle's more of a threat to him at the moment than the infantry is. And these SU-76s, they're just so vulnerable to getting out positioned and flanked. Or end up with, like, piling hiccups. Okay. Very difficult to rely on them alone. Lovnus pushing onto the fuel on the far side. Feels like it's been a very long time since he's managed to do that. And Nico gonna go for another assault green deer squad. That's interesting. I think I probably would go for a penal. I mean, a, a panzer green deer instead of another assault green deer. But all right. Does this upgrade give uh, veterancy? I don't think so. territory and makes them more resilient. Gives them like a perceived accuracy boost and extra man capture speed bonus I guess. No vet rate bonuses though. Uh oh. Pack uh, not vetted up. So pretty goes down there. Oh wow. I thought it was going to get away. Shot missing. Boom, they're going after the penal. Retreat timing. Another penal coming in deep. You know, getting these packs a little bit low. Nico probably going to have to fall back and heal that stuff up. Boom, they're coming in. Going to look for the wipe on the penal on retreat. They're pretty clumped up. Ooh, pretty good connection. Never mind going off. Slowing down Nico's. Territory accumulation. SU-85 coming in for Love Nest. Definitely a lot more reliable than the 76s. Interesting. Another Panzer IV for Nico. The triple cap against Lovnest at the moment, also. Yeah, Gotta be able to complete it. Triple cap running for Lovnest down to just 104 points. Good connection there from the Brumbia. Those PTRS penals not gonna last long. Retreating before another shot can come through. Lovnest is, you know, minimizing the bleed from the Brumbia. Retreating early when squads are on low health, but it's costing him a lot of territory control at the moment. It's pretty well vetted, doing a nice rate of fire there. Ooh, this time Lovnes doesn't get so lucky. Both those shots connecting close to max. And one of these two series just go down, the other one actually spinning around front of the pack and oh that one does get lucky though pack missing the killing blow body blocking maybe hoping for the wipe on this squad can't, can't quite get it it's just 76 Not coming back in on the fresh panzer 4 this is very risky low on health we are losing a sector lovely's branching out to the far vp as well though Sure, 85 getting quite aggressive and nice connection from it there. So is the sniper coming in deep and manages to decrew the pack over here. Big shit shot from the Panzer IV though knocks out a whole bunch of penal models. Just maintaining sight with those models, hoping to finish off the decrew pack. 
But I missed a shot, so that's still alive, and the SU-85 has to disengage with that. Panzer IV looking for the flank on it. Supported by the SU-76, and now the triple cap turned against Nico. <laughs> but again, you know, Loveness missing a killing shot on the pack. Doesn't get the kill on it. it unfortunate. I suppose shooting at that range with the SU-85, you're probably going to expect to miss one or two shots on it, so not that unlucky, but I just could really, you could use a break, you know, <laughs> he, needs a, he needs something, otherwise he's going to drain out on the points. Can't afford to continue capping there, as a four, mobilizing, so SU-76 is there. Connecting. Takes a pack shot though in return. Has to disengage. Double packs under pressure. SU 85 quite far back though. Not in range to return fire on the Brumbia immediately. Or at all. Does bring it forwards. Big damage on the penals. Here comes SU 85 now and bounces the first shot. Brumbia does have the skirts. Shot on the second occasion. We're backing up for repairs and uh, got this back on the capture. The enemy is taking our territory. Nico taking a pretty big backward step here. A lot of things to heal up, reinforce, repair. And uh, okay, gonna go for a third Panzer IV now. Mass Panzer IVs. Lovness doesn't have the anti-tank to answer this either. It doesn't have many defensive mines down at the moment. Just the one I can see at the moment. So, you know, a big Panzer IV dive could net some pretty good results for Nico. He's, uh, you know, tanks with no, no turret. I suppose they're not tanks in that case. Uh, Very vulnerable to getting out position like that. Enemy forces are securing our triggered there. T3485 from Love Nest. Oh, there we go. There was another mine in that area. We'll slow down the Brumbia, and that should give enough time for the uh, T3485 to complete, actually. So that's good news for Love Nest. Slowing down this advance from Nico. Can't quite hold their own here. So Brandy is too strong. Oh, big old crush maneuver. Sticky Satchel coming in though. SU-76 is there. Oh, but he bounces the shot. And that would have been the killing blow. Pack gets decrewed though. P. Terrius could finish the job on that. Oh, the SU-85 cleans it up through the center. Well done. Oh. They are playing this in uh they are playing this in tournament mode. Otherwise, that Panzer IV that was out of control just then, 100% would have shot that sniper. You could see the turret aiming at it. On the Panzer IVs, they're advancing. SU-76 onto the side. SU-85 from this angle, but T-3485 arriving. There goes one Panzer IV. T-3485 in deep here, trying to flank around the triple packs. SU-76 and SU-85 advancing. Oh, a bit of phase through action. As a 4 maybe could survive. T-3485 circling, but this pack going to line up some big hits. And there it goes. And uh, Loveness doesn't really have infantry to push him behind this and threaten the packs. Try to get away with them and does manage to do so. Here comes the sniper back in. Ooh, doesn't quite manage the, to line up the shot and get it through. Su-85 out the back here. Su-76 off to the side. But look at this. Triple cap on the boil for Nico. I've got to get something going and fast. Oh, the mines. 
PTRS over here, that would actually be really nice for just one of these penal squads to pick up. Because you, you don't need the PTRS upgrade on your penal to get access to the sticky statue. You just need to be holding one PTRS. So you could, could get that on one of his penal squads and that would be really nice. One bear coming in. We can just stop the capture. 24 points remaining for Love Nest. So Green is jamming the capture. Bumbi is softening up the infantry. The Penal's over here. Maybe don't have enough firepower to clear off this point. Actually, the Panzer IV is here now as well. Enemy the capture in the center now. Oh, and there goes the SU-76. Triple pack striking hard. S-35 chasing away the Bumbi, but... Lovness, nothing to cap with. One point remaining. And that'll do. Well, wow, great game. Really entertaining. I think Lovedness maybe didn't get as much of an advantage with the tier 1 start as he was expecting to against the Assault Grenadiers. As I was mentioning, you know, now that the M3A1 has the lower army, it uh, just isn't as good against uh, Assault Grenadiers, the SMG squads with the high damage output. Did manage to get a wipe, but it was kind of towards the tail end when the uh, 222s were already about to pop out. And Nico really riding that early st strong start throughout this match. Lovness struggling to tick up, going for the ECU 6 plays. And he did handle them admirably. Just a couple maneuvers on his attacks. It didn't quite work out for him. You know, if he managed to kill those packs that he decrewed, missing a killing shot on them twice, maybe he could have got the job done. It was that close. Really good game. On to uh, game number two in this series. I think it's a best of five. Game two between these Titans. Lovinest sticking his Soviets. Ooh, and locking into counterattack. On the right hand side, we have Nico sticking with Oss, going with defensive. This is a Commander Terminator situation, so we'll see a variety of commanders throughout the tournament. It could explain why we're seeing what we're seeing at the moment. Kind of interesting to see Loveness actually going for Irish double combat engineers right out of the gate. And then building conscripts after that. This is our sector now. A little bit of a tweak to the usual uh, order that we see. As you see, uh, maybe like two conscripts before the second combat engineer, two or three. Loveness going for the second combat engineer right out of the base. I don't know. Uh, what the build order time differences between the combat engineer and the conscript, but I imagine the combat engineer is in the realm of like 10 seconds faster. So it could lead to a touch more early map presence. Meanwhile, Nico getting those Ostrupen cooking. And he's trying to crawl towards the building so he can get out of suppression. And he wins the race. <laughs> oh boy, that was a close call though. He goes soft retreating back towards the machine gun. Lovness knows that he can't chase in any further. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Nico getting quite aggressive against the combat engineers down here. Looks like Lovness going to go for a bit of a cutoff play, perhaps. Do we have some sandbags coming up here. Interesting question will be uh, whether Nico goes for uh, yet another Ostrupen or he chooses to tech at this stage. And we've seen a lot of four Grand Ears. Definitely seems to be the most popular strategy at the moment. Will it be for Ostrupen though? Good flank here with the Combat Engineers. Ostrupen might still be able to beat the Combat Engineers though. I'm just briefly stopping the chase. And the machine gun just going to soft retreat all the way back to base. Spins around at the base doorstep. Strooper never chased though. Conscript slowly losing this one to the Ostrupen at that range. Conscript's flanking the uh, sandbags. Chasing away the pyres as quickly as they can. Looks like this low health squad's going to be the one to capture the fuel. But it has got some uh, S mines on it that could backfire. 
Oh. Ooh, pretty good, uh... That first S-mine barely did any damage to the conscripts. So I think Lovnis got off lightly. And yes, indeed, it is a fourth Ostrupin for Nico. That's a lot of field presence. Lovnis has the medics up at the moment. Question is, are we going to see some shock troops this game? Been a rare sight in tournaments these days. You know, guards definitely dominating out of those two options. But some shock troops could shred through the Ostrupin pretty effectively. So it would be quite nice. Nico with the tech up. Still a little bit of fuel and manpower away from a 222 though. Reconnecting the fuel point at the moment. It's building, uh, the sector is at risk. Could be a bit of a death trap. Looks like Nico looking to head into that, but the flamer is right there. Oh boy. Flamer coming across now, taking a while to set up inside. Oh, it's gonna be close. Oh, it gets out. Must we can jump in and return. Now they're getting flamed. No, oh, flamethrower shooting at the squad outside. Now switches over to the Ostrupin. Gets them very low, but can't hang around any long. Longer. Uh, so his mind's going to get swept up there. MG quite low on health now, though. Oh, wow. Half track coming in for Nico. Wow. Not going to be like a super fast timing, you know. Ostrup in days of old would see a half track with the flamethrower already at 5 minutes 30 on the field. So, it's not like this is a super fast, strong timing. It's like a pretty mediocre one, if he is choosing to go for the flamer. Nice MG position there for Nico, though that was really strong. Didn't switch the focus fire. Oh, but the AoE suppression catches the other one anyway. Bit unlucky for Love Nest. Seemed like he was going to get clear with that second conscripts. And here we go. Flamer is coming up to the north, but as I said, kind of slow timing. Compared to days of old with the Ostrupin. No anti tank grenade package yet for Love Nest. Does have the Zis out, and here it comes. Setting up. Conscripts baiting in, but this statue here seems to be blocking the Zis shots. So no damage onto the flame half track at all. That is bad news for Love Nest. This barrage lands short. No dodge from Nico though. Second shot also landing short though. Okay. Shock troops have arrived. And uh, Loveness does go for the shockies. They are, of course, close to powerless against the Flamer half track. Mid bunker coming up now for Nico. Did delay that quite a lot and going for a second machine gun now. Really looking to lock okay, things down with that. I'm heading to the south. Engineers getting low. Soft retreating though. And Nico's going to allow that to bring the sweeper down. Doesn't want to chase in without uh, the mine sweepers around. Ran over too many mines from Loveness in the last game. Tap round through the building there. This is nearby, but quite a few corners making it tough. A little bit late on the retreat with that squad. MG gets the suppression on though, and they will survive. Passing out some smoke. Oh, this could be a good move here for... Oh no, into tank grenades. And is this missing as well? He's getting off to a bad start with that. Monstrous damage on that conscript squad. Trying to bait the... Uh, Flame half track around the corner. He's not falling for it though. Pretty good handling of that so far 
by Nico. Nothing's trying a few tricks and they haven't sector. been working out. Door on the other side of the building, easy dodge on that grenade. Flame heading to the south, so is the Zis though. The Pyro Sweeper is there, gonna spot that. Is this setting up? And does not get the shot through. I think that was an attack round and it does not connect. Pyro Flamer, I mean a Pyro Sweeper late on the retreat. Is this Barrage hoping to get the kill on it? Doesn't manage to, but it was a nice idea from Love Nest. So far it's been really good for Nico. Just zero damage on the flame half track. It's able to rotate from side to side. Just had to spend any time out back getting repaired. Tripwire going down, mine going down. Lovenish trying to make it painful if Nico wants to harass that fuel again. Losing control of the munitions in the north now. Double machine gun and four Ostrupen is leading to a lot of territory control so far. Trying to kill off the sandbags with the Zis, but the flame of half track heading down here. So it's not going to be in position to deal with that. Let's get away without dropping any models. Zis trying to kill off the sandbags. Doesn't seem to be connecting with any damage so far. Shock troops coming around the corner. Grenade out. Good dodge. Shock troops going to steal the building and then cycle across. Claim half track. Can't quite get the angle going. Maybe hoping to force the retreat on this machine gun. Shock troops doing a lot of damage. But deciding to disengage. The machine gun does hit the retreat button though. Is this heading up in this direction? Didn't manage to finish off those sandbags. Or well, did actually, but... Ducked behind the second set of them. Trying to hide behind the wall. But this time the Zist does end up connecting. Good damage from the Flamer, knocking out a few of those shock troop models. I heard a tripwire going off there. Shock troops coming in on the deep flank. Machine gun doesn't reposition for Nico. LMG pops on the Ostrupen though. That might be enough to force away the shock troops. Do you remember those LMGs? Oh, good gr Ooh, great grenades. Nearly gets this card wipe. LMGs do have a bit more penetration is what I was going to say. So it does help a lot against the shock troops armor. Gonna make it harder for the shockies. Tier 3 is up for Love Nest. Choosing not to go for a light vehicle though, going for a mortar instead. Curious choice. You can see Nico doesn't have an anti tank gun. Does have his tech up. Still, you know, maybe about two minutes away from a Panzer IV. Love Nest did certainly have an opportunity, I would say. To do a lot of damage with the T-70. Oh, that was what died. I thought I heard a tripwire or a mine go off and I couldn't see an infantry squad go down, but it was a mine. Mine on the VP takes down the flamer half track. Okay, that makes more sense now. And mortar getting to work. We did see some nice mortar play on this map from Jiva. Last weekend. I think uh, it does seem like a pretty strong map for the mortar, especially the Soviet mortar, which does have the flares. The extra vision going to be really handy. Grenade out. To the retreat path, though, hoping to catch something on retreat. Doesn't end up working out. And shock troops have been strong performers so far, hitting Vet 2 now. Definitely, it's nice to see a map in the rotation where, you know, shock troops can function a lot more effectively, you know, so many more corners and sight blockers and stuff that allow them to close the distance without getting a laser beam down every single time on the entry. And Love Nest taking advantage of that so far. Coming up 
coming out now for Nico. Is delaying his medium tank though, if that's what he's hoping to get. I mean, you know, just close to 14 minutes into the game, you would expect that if Lumbness was planning to get a light vehicle, he would have got it by now. So his pack seems uh, curious timing. End up cancelling it though, realizing that, and going for the Panzer IV. LMG Ostrup and starting to hit pretty hard. You see, uh, yeah, Vet up to Vet 2. Lovnis has got his tech coming down now, though, or just completed, so. Can start to upgrade his conscripts in return. Let's have that cooking at the moment. Vet 3 on the Ostrup and first squad to hit Vet 3 in this match. Producing now for Nico, got the Panzer IV coming through. Let's see how it does. Lovnius does actually have enough to go for a tank himself. In terms of fuel at least, doesn't have the manpower for it though. Just sitting up. I think the statue does block shots again though. And Lovnius to uh, go for an attack round, does not connect. Does leave his Zis a little bit exposed to the Panzer IV. But Nico playing it safe, not diving in after the kill on it, so let's get away safely. Truck troops heading towards the south again. Nico with some very strong territory control. And just spinning around for the shockies. Can't fire off the smoke grenades. So Lovely is very low on munitions though. Oh, he gets suppressed just before the smoke hits. Here comes the Panzer IV now as well. He can't stick around. Is this slow? In a nice position for Love Nest. Maybe having it side blocked by the smoke a little bit. Ooh, nasty shot. Four models down. And there goes the shock troops. Oh, no. Oh, that is bad news for Love Nest. He was, you know, playing with fire, but that was a monster hit from the Panzer IV. Oh, demo charge went off. Maybe, maybe it was the Flamer. Either way, Nico lost the squad into the building. I think it was the Flamer. Actually, I think I heard the audio cue for that. Drop the LMG. Like the uh, other squad, Ostrupen maybe can pick it up though. I think Ostrupen only have one weapon slot, kind of like conscripts, so they can't get double LMGs here. Looks like Nico hasn't noticed it though. Unless probably has all his conscripts fully upgraded, he does, so the only thing they could pick that up is. Combat Engineer. KV-1 about to pop out for Loveness while saving up for a slightly heavier vehicle. We'll have a good head-to-head -head match up against the Panzer IV, though we'll be slower to rotate on this map. And uh, it does seem to involve quite a lot of rotations with all the uh, sight and shot blockers. Extra mobility does seem to help. The long way around sometimes. Dodging out of the range of the combat engineer flamer, trying to bait them into the machine gun that's back there. To work out pretty nicely. A few shots in from the Zis. There's four low. Conscripts going for the cutoff, but here comes the KV. Do you remember, I don't know if that was the last patch or the patch before, but did get nerfed the KV-1. No longer has the received damage bonus. So uh, these days it does take a very long time to repair it up again. Which I think is a large part of why it lost popularity after the last round of changes. Coming to the south now again though. 
Japanese does have two highly visited combat engineers though. Even for the D crew on the machine gun. Favorable retreat path behind the building. Faust, and that's actually enough to get the engine critical there. I suppose it would be, right? Especially if the Faust uh, penetrates. Or would it be? It's got a thousand health, doesn't it? And 60 plus... Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if it didn't penetrate, it wouldn't. Okay. Bring that straight in my mind. 260 damage. Much bang on. Quarter health. Oh, cheeky Talamine coming up for Nico. One is still back there though, so is this this. Both connecting, Panzer IV, a lot of repairs now. Here come the repairs for the KV-1. But in the meantime, real stranglehold on the VPs by Nico. Ostrup and Start really working out well for him in that department. Still viable, you know, after all of these changes. Still a very strong option. I've missed. I have to decide what he wants to build next. Still quite a bit of fuel away from uh, another medium tank if he wants to go for a T-34. Maybe it's going to be another shock squad shock troops though and it could be pretty strong. Maybe into the north now. Clearing the path. Oh, he doesn't continue on his way through and maybe he's going to get suppressed by that machine gun that's just been camped up there for the longest time now. The double machine guns seem to be working really well for Nico on this map. And now the pack's up there, so KV-1 getting chased away by that. Mortar, though, going to work on that machine gun. Fire off the smoke. Sandbagging up the VP again. I've been so low on the points. Goes for a second anti tank gun as his option. Okay. Nico has put down tier 4 tech. Maybe he's saving for the Panther. Bit of extra penetration can be pretty nice against the KV 1. Conscripts coming in with the widest flank you'll ever see. Won't amount to much though if the uh, Panzer IV is there. Flare up in the center. Love nest. That chases away those double Ostrupen very quickly. Big old conscript flanked here. Man, that's a big one. Panzer IV, as I said, shutting that down. Could even go down on retreat here if he gets a little bit unlucky in that Panzer IV connects. Mm, close call. Does survive. Double anti tank guns now for Love Nest. And look at this machine gun positioning. Really strong for Nico boxing out Love Nest. I'm just getting aggressive, pushing through the center at the moment. Double H tank grenades. He's got the four mother Russia activated now as well. There's a four on one shot. He's just coming around the corner, but decides to give up on that attack. There's sector artillery coming in. And uh, that stops Love Nest from pushing almost immediately. One anti tank gun does get decrewed. And the Panther in production now for Nico. Very strong timing to activate the sector artillery to counter Love Nest's aggressive form of the Russian assault. Really put a halt to that. And Love Nest was kind of relying on that, getting some, some major territory under his belt as a result, but ends up amounting to almost nothing. Talamite's still there. Selected it just before. It is there somewhere. I'm having a lot of trouble seeing it though. K-51 
Heavy one though, doesn't chase him any further. Once again, triple cap against Loveness though. He's got to get something going fast. Heavy one through the center. Just the one anti tank gun there at the moment. Doesn't manage to get a shot through either. Molotov out, pretty nice damage. Machine gun. Looks like the KV coming through to clear that off. Pax in an awkward position at the moment, trying to reposition, find an angle on the KV. Here comes the Panther connecting. Uh oh. KV1 stopping for an extended period there. Pack though, under pressure from the combat engineer, is getting quite low in health. Is this covering the. Heavy one's retreat path at the moment. And does manage to get the decor on the pack. Heavy one should be able to limp home safely, but this is where losing the received damage boost really hurts the KV1. That's a huge amount of damage to have to repair back up. And Omni is still just struggling to capture the VPs. Scripts. The model that was on the point, or the two models that were on the point, dies. So now it's getting captured by Nico. End up retreating there. Water under a bit of pressure. Everyone comes through to assist. Has a four hidden down. Ooh! Okay, that's really good news for Love Nest. It's a wipe there. Needed something like that. Still just can't get these VPs. The double machine guns have just been boxing Love Nest out so much. Especially noticeable since that shock troop squad died without this extra threat of the smoke grenades. Really struggling on the victory points. The enemy is down to 75 points. Flares ready to fire again for Love Nest. MG managed to complete the capture though and now repositioning away from Danger. Second KV-1 coming through for Love Nest. Let's see what he can do here. He's, he's got the ingredients to make a comeback. But he's going to have to knock out one of these tanks. He's heading down in this direction. There's Telemine here somewhere. This could backfire on him horribly. There's Telemine back there. KV-1 trying to back him. <laughs> oh boy! Piling hiccups again for Love Nest, and he lost a lot of his combat he's there as well. Three of them down. On top out. Some KV1 through the center, but the pack's there to meet that. And he goes and jam the capture for a very long time. Double Zis slamming home the damage on the Panther. Neutralizes this, but there's a bunker back there. Love Nest can't capture this one in the south. KV-1's hidden in that direction now. You see get these doubles this into a position, maybe pushing through to here. Okay, he's gonna come around this side instead. Safer option, but maybe you need to take a chance here. 16 points remaining. Sweeps up the telemine at least. Second KV-1 needs to open up the north now. Oh, there's another bunker up there too. Blitzing out to safety. KV-1 trying to knock out the bunker. 10 points remaining though. It's looking grim for Love Nest. Clears off this bunker finally. Mobilizing the second KV-1 into the center now. But there goes the uh, Panther. Double this capping at the moment. Oh, this is engine damage city. And that KV-1 looks sure to go down. Pack coming to the south. For Mother Russia active for Love Nest currently. The script's coming through. No munitions for an anti-tank grenade though in return. So no engine damage on that Panther. Jams the capture for a little bit, but now the Ostrupin going for the capture. And there goes the KV-1. Trying to flank around behind this machine gun. It was reloading and it is successful. Going to force that away. Pack opening up on the second KV-1 now. 
but maybe stop the Austrian from capping that point at least. Go for the steal. Become the Zis. Lifting on the Panzer IV. Makes way to safety. So is the KV-1. Love nests. Five points remaining. Doesn't have any room for error at this stage. So go for it into the south. Conscripts Ura away from it. Dodge any damage. Now jumping back in. Mortar trying to barrage into the center. Trying to stop the capture that way. Got a machine gun covering it again though. out the back getting repaired up but it's taken a very long time indeed and the suppression kicks in looks like Ostrup are going to be able to complete the capture over here two points remaining for love nest he's not going to be able to get it done one point remaining and that'll do love nest goes down two nil so far yeah, just uh, Nico, the double machine guns, really uh, allowing him to strangle Lovenest off those VPs. Losing that shock troop, I think, just hurt Lovenest so much this game. And overall, I feel like his this positioning could have been a tiny bit stronger this match as well. But yeah, well played by Nico for sure. The bunkers, I think, were a nice touch. Just kept Lovenest off the VPs a little bit more towards the tail end. You know, when he's down to those last 50 or so points. And that sector artillery activation to stop Lovness for Mother Russia assault through the center just before the Panther arrived. That was clutch from Nico. Really well done. So onwards we'll go to game three. It'll probably be tomorrow that I end up releasing that. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Keep an eye out for game two or game three and potentially further. <laughs>